There are now more than six billion cell phones in the world today. Eight billion wireless transmitting devices. More than 50 billion are anticipated to form the Internet of Things. And we have to recognize that we don't know a lot about the public health and environmental effects of this form of radiation. Now, way back in the Dark Ages, when the standards were developed, two-dimensional modeling showed that children and smaller adults might absorb more radiation than larger adults. Here, showing you that a smaller adult head here, you see the amount of exposure is, is quite similar, but because the head is smaller, it will absorb proportionally more. Now, this is some new modeling, again, that we've developed with colleagues in Brazil, and we can share with you how we've done it. It's, we first start out with the MRI and create the model with one millimeter voxels, and this is quite a bit of work goes into creating this, and here is what it looks like after a period of six minutes. And that's really not as bad as it might look because you see the red area only gets partway through the eye of the adult, right? The one that we're really concerned about is this one with the young child. And this is a three-year-old brain that we modeled. And you see that by the end of that six-minute call, uh, the peak radiation, yellow and red, is, is, is getting all the way into almost both eyes. And again, this is one call, and it's not going to kill anybody. It may not cause any biological effect whatsoever for one call or two calls or three calls. But the question is, what's the cumulative impact of this kind of exposure? How do we evaluate it? How do we study it? The problem we face is that right now, we're in the midst of an experiment on my grandchildren and your children. There's almost no research underway. Now, when it comes to pregnancy, we're working with Yale University and uh, more than 100 physicians and experts in the United States and around the world who are specialists in pregnancy. And we have been modeling exposure to the head at the end of pregnancy. And at the end of pregnancy, when, of course, the head, as any woman here knows, is right at the surface, um, if you're lucky, it's at the surface and it's not facing the spine, then you can get the greatest exposure because, of course, the skin is completely permeable to this radiation exposure. And that's why we've developed the Baby Safe Project with colleagues at Yale to advise pregnant women to protect their abdomens from mobile phone radiation, as well as from iPads, which I should add, iPads and other devices are called tablets because they belong on tables. They are tested 20 centimeters away from that big guy that I showed you before. 20 centimeters away. They are not approved to be held in the laps of little children although millions of kids are having them now in schools because the people involved in educational technology and those involved in public health research are not talking to one another. Because if they were, they would understand that you're giving children a two-way microwave radiating device, and if you must give them such a device for learning purposes, put it on airplane mode so that it's not sending and receiving signals as it does otherwise. My colleagues at Yale University have taken mice, exposed them to mobile phone radiation, and they have found significant effects on those mice's behavior as adults, all right? Prenatally exposed mice have hyperactivity as adults. And these are some of the data. They have worse memory, they're more hyperactive, they have more anxiety, but they don't have much fear. It's kind of interesting. And because of that, that is why we've developed the Baby Safe Project, working with colleagues at Yale University and around the world. This is showing you cellular damage that occurred in animals that were prenatally exposed to mobile phone radiation that was produced by a computer simulating the mobile phone exposure under controlled conditions, right? So, because you can't really get rats to make phone calls. You've got to model the exposure. And what they did 
is they, then they measured in, these are your controls that you compare things with, and these were the exposed. Prenatally exposed, just 15 minutes a day for seven days. Not much exposure. But these are small animals, and they grow within three weeks. They, they reproduce. And what they were able to study was changes in liver malonaldehyde, which is a measure of um, peroxidation. It's a measure of damage to the liver, right? So these animals basically had significant damage to their liver if they had been exposed prenatally compared to controls. Now, another group in Turkey has looked at prenatal effects on the brain and the testis. And they looked at newborn rats after they had been exposed prenatally and compared those who were exposed to those who were not exposed. And they looked at their brain cells, the, the number of cells, their shape, et cetera, with established methods for testing this. And this article was published in Brain Research, which is a relatively high impact journal. And what they showed was that prenatally exposed newborns have basically fewer cells in the hippocampus. Here's the exposed, missing some cells. And here are the controls, which they're compared with. And you can see here that these cells are, uh, there's more of them. Here they're more scattered. And in fact, they did another test of memory. And what they found was that newborns that had been exposed took three times as long to find their way out of an experimental maze and made twice as many errors. And this, again, is a statistically valid method for evaluating learning. Studies have been done taking sperm from healthy men. And one test tube gets exposed to cell phone radiation, and one test tube is not exposed to mobile phone radiation. And then the results are evaluated. And this is a measure of vitality. We measure how well the sperm swim. This is a measure of mo mobility, motility. This is a measure of mitochondrial DNA damage. They have three times as much damage on their DNA if they have been exposed to mobile phone radiation as compared to controls. And these research has been done uh, in India, in the United States, at the Cleveland Clinic, and around the world. So many different studies have been done on sperm damage associated with mobile phone radiation that in the seventh edition of the textbook, Biostatistics in Medicine, Stanton Glantz concludes that the evidence linking mobile phone radiation to sperm damage is causal, meaning there clearly is a cause of damage to sperm for mobile phone radiation. Now, it's, we, we have a lot of uncertainties in this field. The truth is, we have a lot of uncertainties, but not about sperm. There, the evidence has become rather strong, and it's become clear, so clear that the Indian government has issued warnings about this, that clinics that deal with reproductive problems are routinely advising young men to get those phones out of their pockets, recognizing that this is a hidden hazard to healthy reproduction. We are seeing women who keep cell phones in their bras. Has anyone seen a woman put a cell phone in her bra? Hands up, please. Please tell them you've heard now why they shouldn't do that. And here I want to show you our first case report from 2009. And we now have many more. This was a Chinese-American woman, a Chinese-American woman who used her cell phone four hours a day in her bra for 10 years while she was driving. Now, and you drive with a, with a phone on your body. The phone is smart. It's going to go from one tower to another, and it's going to say, here I am, where are you, here I am. And it's going to be going to max power each time it moves from one cell tower to another. And there it was right next to her chest. And the tumors that developed, developed right under the antenna of the phone. Unusual tumors. In 1994, when industry first became aware that there were studies suggesting that mobile phone radiation could damage brain cells of rats, a memo was written to, quote, war hyphen game the science. War game the science. This issue is far too important to be gamed 
it's not a matter of war. It's a matter of the future health of your children and grandchildren.